Hey guys, I'm Shane. And I'm Rick with Techspin. So, how's the new build coming along? Well, I found this nice Johnsbo CPU cooler online, and Johnsbo was kind enough to sponsor us a review unit. I saw the picture. It's got some cool LED effects, right? Yeah, I'm pretty happy to be able to test it out. And also, we received the Sadie's horse in white to match the theme. Nice. At Techspin, we're committed to bringing you honest testing and opinions in our reviews. So let's check out this CPU cooler and see if it's worth your money. The Johnsbo CR101 retails for 1,390 NT or about $46 US. It measures 127 millimeters high by 120 wide and 158 long to accommodate the heat pipes. The unit's been painted all black with a double coating and they have four versions total with different color and LED accents. This review unit has white accents and matching LED while there's also green, blue, and red variants with matching colored LEDs. This is a four centimeter thick downflow radiator, so the heat exhausts towards the motherboard, although with a standard 120 by 120 by 25 millimeter fan moving that air, you won't have to worry about your board components heating up. The CR101 has four heat pipes coming up from the heatsink, which is color matched on the green and blue versions, as well as red. This one is the original aluminum color. The unit will effectively cool CPUs up to 135 watts of TDP, a rating that specifies how much power the CPU draws, as well as how much heat needs to be dissipated. So this will handle most of even the mainstream Intel i7 lineup and should be just fine for AMD's Ryzen CPUs. And Sadies has sponsored us the Horus case in white for the build. Thanks so much, guys. It comes with AMD hardware mounts supporting AM4 and also Intel mounts supporting 775 and 1150X. I'm using the Intel mounting brackets which are on the left. They are shorter and splay out more than the AMD brackets on the right. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver to put in the tiny screws. Attaching them is pretty easy. The mounting rails drop down as viewed from this angle to accommodate the rubber spacers between the mounts and the motherboard. After all four are done, Next is time for the bolts. There are three holes in the Intel mounts. Outer is for LGA 1366, inner for 775. We're using the 1150X spot in the middle, which fits 1150, 51, 55, and 1156 sockets. The nuts are at one side of the spacers, and that is up as shown here. The bolts are shaved slightly at the top, so they will sit flush with the bracket and won't spin when done correctly. AMD has two holes in the bracket, outer for AM2, 2+, 3+, FM1, 2, and 2+, while the inner hole is for AM4. With all attached hardware except for the final nuts, the Johnsbo CR101 weighs in at 608 grams. We'll use the Johnsbo supplied thermal compound on the CPU. I am aware that many people will say this is too much, but I like it a little bit more than most, I guess. Once that's done, we'll lower the cooler onto the CPU. Note I have the heat pipes at the top and bottom, as if you have them on the sides, you'll likely end up blocking your RAM slots. Next, tighten the nuts on the back of the board in an alternating pattern, snug but not too tightly. Be sure not to scratch the board with a wrench too. In the box, you get four tiny washers with tape on them, which they recommend you stick on the motherboard. For me, I may reuse this cooler in the future, so I stuck the washers onto the nuts instead. I'm doing this at an angle so you can see it, but you should lie your motherboard flat, upside down on the cooler. This will ensure you get good contact with the CPU. It's done, so we just need to attach the PWM power wire to the CPU header on this MSI B360 Gaming Arctic. And a little attempt at a cleaner cable look. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Let's test out its cooling capabilities with a benchmark versus an Intel stock cooler. 
the tests were conducted at an ambient temperature of 26 degrees. First time benchmarking, I tried using NZXT's CAM software for its dark, nice GUI for the camera, but after a restart, the software's newly installed registry entries blocked the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility and it refused to launch, giving me a could not communicate with server error. Online, I found tons of posts complaining about NZXT CAM's software, so I'd recommend not using it. Using hardware info, I logged the CPU package and fan data for these results on the MSI B360 Arctic Gaming with an i3-8100 at 3.6 GHz. Up first, the reference Intel stock cooler, which we see hit an average of 54 degrees Celsius after 5 minutes. The max temp it hit was 57 degrees. The Johnspo CR101 after 5 minutes at max averaged out 49 degrees, and its max value came in just 1 degree higher at 50 C. As for the idle tests, the Intel stock came in at 32 degrees, and the Johnsbo CR101 also at 32 degrees. A great improvement on stock, and with hotter CPUs it should dissipate even more heat, up to its thermal TDP limit of 135 watts. With smaller fan blades you need faster rotation to move the same amount of air. On idle, the Intel was 1055 RPM, spitting up to 1350 at the end of 5 minutes. The Johnsbo, on the other hand, averaged 400 RPM, going up to 460 RPM, ending the test. At max speed, the Intel can hit 3200 RPM, but sounds like an airplane readying for takeoff. I don't have a decibel meter, so unfortunately, no numbers here. The CR101 likes to idle around 400 RPM, and at max, it gets up to just under 1500 RPM. So much quieter, and pushing a ton more air with those big blades. The fan is nice and silent, rated at 18 decibels at 600 RPM, up to 26 dBs at 1600 RPM. The 18 LEDs around the outside and chrome-plated blades give a really amazing appearance. So, thoughts? What did you think? Well, um, yeah, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. The cooler was uh, pretty well made. I like the uh, black and white mixed aesthetic. Also, you know, um, it's got a really nice look with the spinning rims. Very fancy. Yep, that's true. And if we turn it on here, you can see the, the chrome reflects, reflects the LEDs very nicely here. So um, yeah, I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's got like a, a neat sort of way that it looks like it's like layers of light. Yeah, it, it, it reflects there. I was actually surprised because I thought chrome on the blades and like really, but actually um, it, it uh, turns out to make a really awesome pattern here. And um, mounting it wasn't too hard either because uh, these are the AMD ones, but it also ships with Intel. And uh, you do have to actually screw it in um, on the actual mounting plate. And then you, ha you have to have access to the back of the CPU where you use a wrench, which is also included, ta-da, to actually attach it onto your motherboard. Yeah, it was a pretty unique looking uh, mounting device. That's true. Um, good thing is that Johnspo uh, throws in some thermal compound just in case uh, you didn't have any lying around, so you can use this one too, that's great. And let's open up the side here. Ta-da. <clears throat> yeah, I really like the uh, black, the black and white theme. The fins are nice and the fins are nice and big too, so it can dissipate a lot of heat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what about you said uh, approximately ten degrees cooler than the stock unit? Yeah, that's right. I, I, well, the ambient temperature I did, but the benchmarks that was twenty six degrees, and generally the CPU sat idle at around thirty seven for both. Uh, I think this was down by one degree or something, but um, on full on full load, uh, the Intel went up to 58, and then this one um, actually brought it down considerably, about 10 degrees, so about 47, 48. So that was yeah. uh, that was that's really good. Well, yeah, especially important, you know, in a place like this where you get a lot of ambient heat. Yeah, that's true. So it's a nice cooler. Um, yeah, definitely, really, really beautiful, especially if you're doing an all white build. Um, Turn this here so you can see. Got the front done up with uh, fans as well. So that looks pretty awesome. 
pretty happy with this overall. I might do some custom painting inside, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it is a pretty slick design. It is. Well done by Johnsbo. The Johnsbo CR101 CPU cooler gets points for a very nice presentation and with variants of red, green, blue, and our review unit of white. It can fit pretty much anything built. With a sturdy design and its four heat pipes, it proves it can effectively cool all the top selling Intel and AMD chips on the market today. With its powerful cooling ability, good sized radiator, and great choice of themes, the Johnsbo CR101 CPU cooler scores a nine on the meter. A lot of the CPU coolers have a bare aluminum heatsink design, and the Johnsbo excels by coating the fins against corrosion, matching the heatsink with anodization on the red, blue, and green models, and gives an eye-catching LED pattern as the centerpiece of your rig. In my opinion, the cooler could have sat a little lower to open up the space inside the case, and you could say so it could fit inside small form factor cases, but those cases generally don't have acrylic side panels or tempered glass windows. So having it a bit higher for better compatibility with new motherboard MOSFET heatsink covers and performance RAM with their high fins for cooling or RGB effects was a good compromise. I'm also giving this a Techspin Platinum Award for its unique eye-catching design and great CPU cooling ability. It's an effective and unique LED cooler. And the next step from here would be for Johnsbo to make this cooler with RGB integrating control with the motherboard software and switchable colored inserts to better fit your theme. So should you buy it? At 1,390 NT or about $46 US, it's a CPU cooler competing with other big name brands, but with better looks. It can be slightly more expensive than those, but the $10 premium you may pay gives you a case showpiece and not just an ugly hunk of aluminum. It's also nicely quiet even at full load on my i3-8100, I could barely tell it was on, sitting on a test bench beside me. At full speed, it will be a little audible, but not noisy at all. I really feel that this cooler will be a great match for your next build. What do you think of the cooling ability or the LED design? Have you found a great CPU cooler you like or a good deal? Any items that you'd like to see reviewed in upcoming episodes? Then let us know in the comments. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, or please do tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content, and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and do respond to most, so if you have a question or if we did miss something, then please do tell us down below, and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you again soon. Bye for now.